Anarchism is a 1962 work of political history by the Canadian author George Woodcock. Woodcock moved to England in early childhood. He decided not to go to university, becoming instead a clerk for a railway company, which is where he became an anarchist and a writer. He met T.S. Eliot and Aldous Huxley, and he spent World War II as a conscientious objector in Essex, a move which earned him the contempt of George Orwell, who accused him of pandering to fascism. Nevertheless, he and Orwell later became great friends. In 1949, feeling Britain was no place for a pacifist, he returned to Canada. He set up a literary magazine, which helped Margaret Atwood, among others, on a road to fame. In 1961, he went to Dharamsala to offer encouragement and support to the Dalai Lama, who'd fled Tibet after the 1959 uprising against the Chinese occupation. From the 1930s onwards, he wrote plays, novels, poems, and non-fiction. When he died in 1995, he was widely regarded as Canada's foremost man of letters. Although anarchism, subtitled A History of Libertarian Ideas and Movements, first appeared in 1962, it was significantly revised for a second edition in 1986. In his preface to the updated version, Woodcock explained that anarchism as it had developed since the 1960s had now become something different, a series of new manifestations. The book's divided into two parts, the first dealing with the theory and the theorists. We start with a consideration of anarchism's roots, particularly in the English Civil War and the French Revolution. What follows is a chapter on each of the movement's central thinkers, the Englishman William Godwin, husband of the feminist philosopher Mary Wollstonecraft and the father of Mary Shelley, the German Max Stirner, the Frenchman Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, and three Russians, Peter Kropotkin, Mikhail Bakunin, and Leo Tolstoy. It soon becomes obvious that here we have a collection of intellectuals with very little in common except their opposition to all forms of government. Godwin and Stirner didn't even call themselves anarchists. Godwin supported the rights of man, Stirner derided the very notion of man. Bakunin was an atheist who famously declared that the urge to destroy is also a creative urge. Tolstoy was a Christian and a pacifist and so on. Even the common post hoc division of anarchists into right and left wing doesn't resolve the diversity, which in its supporters' eyes may not be a problem. The tyranny of officially sanctioned doctrine, they might say, is no less oppressive than the tyranny of government. But one of the criticisms often levelled at anarchism is that beyond its comprehensive anti-authoritarianism, it's difficult to say what it actually is. Nowadays, of course, it doesn't even have to be anti-capitalist. There are versions known as ANCAP, short for anarcho-capitalist. The book's second part tackles that problem in the best way it can, not through a well-intentioned stab at a conflict-resolving synthesis, but through an historical presentation. So we get six chapters dedicated to modern anarchism as a concrete phenomenon in selected national arenas. Anarchism in France, anarchism in Italy, in Spain, in Russia. Whether those chapters help is for the reader to decide. In a sense, it doesn't matter. Woodcock may have been an anarchist himself, but this isn't primarily an exercise in political apologetics. It's an historical survey of a disparate movement, and it leaves the business of discerning common threads, if there are any, to the reader. For Woodcock, anarchism was an ongoing project. His ideal reader wouldn't be as concerned with the past as they would be with the future. For those interested in finding out more about George Woodcock, there's a very good video on YouTube called George Woodcock, The Anarchist of Cherry Street. It was made in 1995, just after his death. For those interested in finding out more about anarchism, Woodcock's book can be a little hard to come by nowadays, but Ruth Kinner's 2020, The Government of No One, also does a very good job, and of course it brings the story of the movement much more up to date.